Alrighty guys, welcome to the most recent finals that we did have for the Energon Invitationals. Obviously have Wes on the right side with the primetime and Jason on the right side of the screen rocking the bold and the beautiful four wide. Now he is going to be flipping RC turn one and sending Lionizer in to Wheeljack. And this is a really good list. He just has so much aggression, so much bold, obviously, given by the deck. He's just going to be getting in for crazy amounts of damage. It looks like he's getting in here with eight. Kind of tough to see what he's blocking there, but it looks like he is blocking five and is going to be taking a total of three onto the wheel jack, which is really, really nice. That is the one advantage to the primetime list. That thing does have the ability to block for a crazy number of damage and then also be able to turn around and give back a massive punch. So we're going to see what West is going to go with here. Most likely probably giving Flame War out here, being able to flip her, giving tough to the team, and then being able to send her in for some damage. Especially you don't really want to KO Lionizer in these situations. You want the Lionizer to try to live for as long as possible unless you see a piece of tyranny. It looks like he is going for that play. Specifically did flip the flame war and it looks like he's looking to toughen her up a little bit with a sparring gear it does give her the sparring gear now having tough three to her and sending her back into lionizer getting the bold one make sure you don't miss the proc there flip it a bunch of blues which is unfortunate but getting in for three damage which is okay like i said again on that lionizer you really don't want to do a, a bunch of damage to it so Pick it up that Noble's Blaster on the left side, allowing him to get plus two attack. Not going to really give uh, anyone the pierce in this situation, but it is going to give that plus two attack. Heading back over to Jason's turn here. He is pondering, most likely going to be up flipping the top shot and trying to either get in with top shot or just trying to uh, tap to be able to draw some extra cards. He's going for a ramming speed, getting rid of that sparring gear, now removing the tough two. Multi-mission gear going on to Wheeljack the Specialist, allow him to play one more action, and that action is going to be Treasure Hunt. Alright, now I had a freeze frame in here because look at that Treasure Hunt, pulling out two grenade launchers, a force field, and a power punch. That is absolutely crazy. Really, really awesome dig for that Treasure Hunt. Alright, he's going to scoop those up. I can tell that Wes is probably in a lot of pain there. That was quite a dig for a treasure hunt there. Throwing top shot into, uh, going into Flame War. Going to be showing, I believe that is three. Uh, that's going to be four, and then going into Flame War blocking three. So she's going to be taking one. Wes is going to be debating here if he wants to pick up that enforcement batons or not. And it looks like he is choosing to not get it. Sending all those cards to the scrim. All righty. Let's see what he's doing here. He's going to draw off the top of the deck. He's going to get a handheld blaster. Oh, he does have a security checkpoint in hand, which means he's going to be able to really strip Jason of all those uh, cards that he did just happen to get off that treasure hunt. He looks like he is going to be playing the Noble's Blasters first to be able to make sure he doesn't scrap his own Noble's Blaster. Let's do see what he is looking for here. The security checkpoint is going to really hurt Jason. All right, he is going to be playing... The Noble's Blaster there, which does allow him to draw one and scrap one. So it'll be interesting to see what he does draw. He did get lucky there. I was really kind of afraid that he was going to pick up a, another upgrade. But being able to draw the press the advantage there and allow him to scrap that. Oh, and he just throws down the security checkpoint. It literally hits everything in Jason's hand, which is crazy. That's what, seven cards that he did just scrap at that security checkpoint. That was a huge security checkpoint. Probably one of the biggest security checkpoints that I've seen. It was a massive, massive turn. Alrighty. Wow, that was crazy. Flipping Wheeljack, and he's probably going to be getting in here, obviously. Most likely going into Top Shot again. You don't really want to kill the Lionizer, especially now that he knows that there is no Peace Through Tyranny in Jason's hand. There's no point in getting rid of Lionizer, so he is going into Top Shot. Looks like he is debating if that is the correct attack. Nope, he is going to be sending him in the Lionizer. It's going to be an interesting play here. He's going to be getting in for quite a bit of damage. This might be enough to be able to get the Lionizer KO'd. We're looking at 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Whew, that is definitely going to be enough to get the job done. I'm going to be KOing him and putting him onto that wheel jack. That's what I was really afraid of there was doing that actual attack where you were getting rid of Lionizer and making him now into a weapon. It's just going to allow Jason to be able to hit really hard back here for quite a bit of damage. It's also interesting with not putting the Saber onto Arcee, who really needs that pierce and really wants that pierce, and uh, just her being a raw one attack pierce one isn't really that good. 
but top decking and force mutons gonna be pretty nice gets rid of that nobles blast from our wheeljack and then sending wheeljack into wheeljack for quite a bit of bold here looking at bold seven Flipping all of the cards. Say that's 9, 10, 11. That's going to be 16 damage. Getting in with Pierce 1. Uh, that is pretty good. So that is going to be more than enough to get that job done on the wheel jack. Again, um, kind of unfortunate that he did have to go through that route. But uh, Jason really got to benefit from that lionizer going down and really getting a massive hit in there with that wheel jack. Draws off the top, getting that improvised shield, showing a vaporize, and getting rid of it, which is probably what Wes's play there was, knowing that he was going to have to deal with it for at least one turn, but did have a response for it, and probably wasn't expecting his wheeljack to get one shot. Flipping Optimus Prime, the general fantastic character. Absolutely love that character. One of my favorite characters from Wave 3. Really strong here. Uh, he did already play in action for the turn, so he's most likely thinking about playing that improvised shield as an additional tough onto Prime. Looks like he is opting not to and sending him into Wheeljack. Does get the focus, chooses to keep it on top because it is a white pip, allowing him to flip two more. Getting some pretty good flips here and then getting the bold one on top of that. Really nice, getting in for nine. It is nine. Taking a seven because he does have that one armor from the multi-mission gear. And he looks like he's picking up the espionage and getting rid of the bashing shield. Again, interesting play there, seeing as how Jason's going to be top decking the rest of the game. I don't think he'll be holding on to any cards, so pretty much be playing them as he gets them. But I can understand that having the improvised shield in hand is not really necessary, and you really want to get the double orange pips back into your deck. Jason does have a little bit of a debate here. I did not get to see what he drew, so I do not know what's in his hand, but it looks like it's going to be, oh, all right, that's going to be an erratic lightning. That was his debate, was whether or not getting rid of his card. He is throwing RC here into General Prime, getting in for six, Pierce six. So no matter what Wes is going to flip here, he's going to be taking that big old six. Alrighty, everyone going for the restraint here, the stand up, and it's going to be Wes's turn. He does have that press the advantage, which is going to give him plus two attack potentially, obviously onto the general prime. You can't play that onto flame war at all. It's going to be some nice little bit of extra damage, and I think this is going to be his turn here to try to either KO RC in one swing or to try to finish off the wheeljack if possible. Got a little bit of a debate here. Looks like he's choosing to flip prime, which is now going to allow Flame more to be able to get bold one and tough one. She also has inherently tough one, so now she's looking at tough two. Oh, looks like he's opting to not go for that flip. Again, I think here is a really good play for him to probably press the advantage and really, um, I would flip Flame more in the situation because she does allow your rest of your team to get bold one and then I would definitely be sending this general prime into RC, having her out and being able to do so much damage. He is going for the press onto Prime, giving him plus two. Now he's swinging in for base eight. And he is choosing to go into RC. Again, missing the flip on the Flame War there, but he probably is valuing the extra tough two. Um, I'm going to say the extra tough one in response. He did get a double orange off the top, so that is going to be able to get enough done to the RC, especially since she has an erratic lightning, which does give her minus one armor. Going to be shuffling up here. All he needed to do was get in for 9 exactly, and he is in for 10. So this is going to be the job done, even if it did have an armor. Jason obviously doesn't run any blues in his list. So this is where math in these kind of games can be really nice. You don't have to worry about armor. You can just do the base uh, math on board and be able to get in. All right, now this does leave Wes's Optimus Prime exposed. I think it's actually still the very much the correct play to be able to get her off the table. Again, the Pierce is just way too much. And it looks like he's just going to be sending Top Shot back into Prime. Getting in for a five, I believe. There is the tough one, and there is the tough two. So the three, he's going to be taking it two damage onto that Prime, which is now going to be putting him at eight, leaving him with six health still. He is going to have to worry about that big wheeljack turn going into him. There's not much he's going to be able to do about it, but it looks like he is pondering here on this uh, sparring gear, and he did pick it up for the espionage. I think this is a good play, and being able to play that next turn is now going to allow that Prime to have tough four, which is most likely going to be able to allow him to live through a wheeljack hit. 
So looks like he is hitting the espionage and he's going in for orange, which is really good there. It does hit the ramming speed, which does allow him to play the sparring gear really uncontested, which I think would be really, really nice here. It looks like he might also be pondering the grenade launcher that's in his hand to try to get as much damage and KO this top shot. Looks like he is going for the sparring gear play, which I think is right. And it really allows him to protect that prime. Getting that tough war is really, really nice. Looks like he's going to be flipping Prime so he can get the bold onto Flame War and sending Flame War in. I don't think that is correct, unfortunately. Like I said, it just the getting the damage on Top Shot isn't really that relevant. He's not that relevant of a character, so I don't think the bold one is necessary. Now, it did work out in his scenario because he did get to flip three oranges, which does get to KO, but he does get to lose focus and lose tough one on that Prime. Alrighty, looks like Jason is deep in the tank here, thinking about how to best get this done. He is obviously going to be trying to focus down on that Prime. He really needs that Prime out of the way. I can't tell if he did have... Oh, he okay, he does have the Bold. Which means he's going to be getting in here for pretty good amounts of damage anyway. I don't know what card is in his hand that he's debating on. Doing all the math, just really trying to make sure he takes his time, plans this out. These are two more aggressive lists, so they don't really have to worry about time so much. Um, and it looks like he is going for the power punch. Great call. I think that is definitely necessary. I think he really needs to get this prime off the table. Getting in here for bold six, and he is going to be flipping a lot of oranges. Although West did flip actually really good on defense as well. This is the one thing about that prime list I said I love so much about it. He's blocking eight over there. <clears throat> gonna have to straighten all his cards because even I can't see them all. Looks like he's getting in for 16. So he's gonna be taking a total of eight, which is gonna be just enough to get the job done on that general prime. But again, like had it not been an absolutely massive hit of 16, that prime is, was blocking eight and was able to dish out 10 on the previous turn. So really, really awesome stuff. Alrighty, so it looks like it's coming down here to a Flame War versus a Wheeljack. Now, we do know that West does still have the Grenade Launcher in hand, which means that he is looking at 7 damage. He did just get the Zap. The Zap's going to do really nice stuff here, getting him the 1 extra damage, putting him... He's going to be flipping for the turn which uh, for Flame War, which is really nice, giving the Bold, hitting that Grenade Launcher, and this looks like this might be enough to get the job done. Alright, getting an Orange there. A couple of Blanks, which is unfortunate, but he is going to be getting in for 8 Yep, 8 damage, taking 6, and that is going to be uh, 14. Yep, 14, which is enough to get the job done on the Wheeljack. Wheeljack only has 13 health, so it did get the job done. Game 1, going to West, and let's get into game number 2. All right, now getting into game two. Now, I did see that both both players sorry, did cyborg. However, I wasn't able to see what cards got cyborg specifically. So if I do see uh, which ones get cyborg in this game, I'll make sure I point them out to you guys. Now, it looks like Jason here is uh, does have the ability to choose if he wants to go first. And it looks like he is debating whether or not he does want to go first. He did opt to go first. So he's going to be drawing that additional card in the beginning of the game. Debating who he wants to go first with, flipping RC, going, and then Lionizer sending into, most likely going into Wheeljack here, which I think would still be the correct play. It looks like he is still going to go into Wheeljack. Getting in for pretty good damage here. The one thing that I will admit I haven't seen a whole lot of from Jason is White Pips in his deck. We do know that he does have Force Field, but I haven't really seen many other White Cards. Now, this is going to be getting in uh, for one damage. He did swing for six, but... Uh, the wheel jack did block very well there. All right, top deck and a supercharge there is pretty nice. Like I said, I don't know if he's going to be going for the one shot on this lionizer again, or if he's going to be wanting to lead this lionizer around. It's always a really interesting play. Like I said, whether or not you want to take that lionizer or any of the weapon masters, battle masters down is interesting because you don't want them to get the extra turn off them, which could really hurt. But then again, you also don't want to KO the character and give your opponent the weapon. So it's always a really interesting debate. Going to be flipping Flame War and sending Flame War into Lionizer, opting to not go for any big plays, and getting in for uh, three damage. And then he does have two armor, so getting in for a one total on the Lionizer. Flipping the top shot. All 
All right, Jason is debating what he's going to be doing here. He did obviously flip the top shot, getting him in there, but he's probably debating on loading him up, which he is with a press the advantage and with a power punch. So getting in for huge damage here, the press the advantage also does hurt Flamer because she has a Decepticon, so she does lose the minus two. Getting in for nine, and it seems like he's blocking one, so it means he's going to be taking eight damage onto the Flame War. Pretty big hit there. Gets uh, gets her really within range of a lot of different cards that are in Jason's list, making it pretty easy to KO her on a, another easy crackback and not have to put too much resources into the swing. Looks like he's getting rid of the Improvised Shield, picking up the Enforcement Batons. Most likely in preparation for getting rid of the Lionizer and then being able to respawn the Lionizer weapon on the following turn. Nope, looks like he is choosing to not get that uh, Enforcement Baton. <laughs> yes, he is. All right, we're going to wait here and see what he does finally decide. All right, he does finally decide to pick up that Noble's Blaster, giving him the plus two. Now with that Enforcement Baton's did getting flipped and going to the Scrampier, that obviously does turn on Wes's Wheeljack. If he does choose that, he wants to flip and get the Bold. Going into the tank here, deciding if he does want to probably go all in on this Lionizer or do a hit onto the top shot. Playing the Noble's Blaster. This almost seems like a complete replay from way, from game one almost with the sequencing. Drawing a card and scrapping a card and get to see what he got there. Um, he is going to be flipping Wheeljack for the turn and sending him into top shot. So it looks like West did bring in Infiltrates from the sideboard. That is one of the top cards, and I know that we did not see that earlier on. Getting in here for this bold three, and then bold one off Optimus. So getting in for more than enough damage to get the job done here on this top shot. Moving everything aside, now it is going back to Jason's turn. Drawn a card. I love his play mat, by the way. It's just absolutely awesome. Every time I see him put that thing down, it is, it is one of my favorite favorite play mats. All right, flipping Wheeljack. He is going to be access to bold three now because I'm sure he does at this point have a weapon in the scrapyard. We know that we saw him play the power punch earlier. He's going to be a rock tossing that flame war for one, meaning that all he has to do is get one more in the future and we can just KO her without even send in a swing at her, which is really nice. Now, we did see that Rock Toss in Game 1, so it is not a sideboarded card. I know that when I talked to Jason about the sideboarded card, or I'm sorry, about Rock Toss, he talked about how he also has kind of the same effect that I do in always living, uh, leaving an opponent living with one, so Rock Toss was always a really easy way to be able to finish off that character, so very true. So sending Wheeljack in with no upgrades here, most likely into the other Wheeljack since he did put the Rock Toss onto Flame War. He's probably not going to be swinging into her. Looks like he's getting in for 10 Pierce 1 if I can do my math right. Not much of a block from Wheeljack. He is probably 2 that he's blocking. Um, looks like 2, so he is going to be taking 8 damage. All right, so the math was right there. That is what he was taking is the eight damage, putting him at a total of nine damage on that wheeljack. He's going to be debating, Wes is going to be debating here if he wants to try to pick up that other Noble's Blaster or that press the advantage. I think he should go for the Noble's Blaster, to be honest. It's just another easy weapon. It does give the plus two. All right, looks like he's picking up the press the advantage, which means I would probably guess that he has a weapon in hand and he just wants to be able to also get extra damage with the action. Alrighty, he's West drawn for the turn. Trying to see what his hand is. It looks like he does have a grenade launcher there, and it looks like he might be going all in on this wheel jack here, which would be probably correct. It also looks like West did bring in some ISO functions from the sideboard. I do see one in his hand now. He did have the grenade launcher and is going for the press and is going for a big hit into wheel jack. Let's see if he can get the KO here. Chooses to scrap the first card. He also did bring in Dampening Fields. That is another card from the sideboard. Now, we did see a lot of oranges already from Wes in the beginning of the game, so this is going to probably be the blue half of his deck, which is unfortunate. But he's going to be getting for 12. And Wheeljack will be taking 11, meaning he'll be living with 2 health. Really unfortunate for Wes that he didn't see any oranges on that swing. But like I said, we did see a lot of oranges in the beginning um, of the, the match here. So it is makes sense that he's going to have more blues left in the deck. Alrighty, getting rid of those cards. 
Jason's going to be drawn for the turn. It's going to see he's going to be able to get a really big hit here, most likely finishing off the wheeljack because he really can't afford for that wheeljack to untap on Wes's side. It does seem kind of unfortunate he doesn't have that wheeljack KO to be able to send him into uh, Prime here. He also has the other option of going into Flame War, which I highly don't recommend because you really want to be able to get a nice RC hit into this wheeljack and you only need to get four damage in so one weapon will definitely get the trick um job done because you're most likely to be flipping at least two oranges meaning you're at three so he really needs to find at least one damage here so he is going to zap flamethrower that is going to send her packing really interesting that jason runs both zap and rock toss i do think that's really interesting but those are two one damage cards all right, so he is start throwing RC into Wheeljack here with just bare bones getting in for three, um, nine, ten, eleven. That is going to leave uh, the Wheeljack with one health. Yeah, I think Jason should have gone for the zap there onto Wheeljack just to really confirm it. Uh, the flame word being alive isn't really that much of a deal whereas leaving the wheeljack alive for the turn is really really unfortunate and that is going to hurt a lot when he does get the crack back here Alrighty, drawn for turn, picking up that fantastic improvised shield off the top of the deck. I always find myself in the same situation with these mixed lists sometimes when you're running these double pip cards that you always seem to find yourself drawing them when you least need them. Debating here probably on West's side if he does want to throw in this wheeljack off the bat and try to go into the RC, which would be my best guess. You know the wheeljack is going to go down. The other chance or the other thought process that he does have is going into wheeljack and finishing him off. Looks like he is sending him into RC. He also did not flip anyone for the turn. If he was going to throw in Wheeljack, I probably would have flipped Prime for the turn to give him another bold. And also tough to maybe kind of keep him around, especially if he can KO this RC. So he's got to be able to get in here for 10 damage, and it looks like he's looking at 7 currently, and he only gets to flip 3 more cards, which all need to be oranges. Can't see what they are, but I do get to see a, a handheld blaster up there, so it looks like he's not going to be getting in for the full amount. <clears throat> so it looks like he's getting in here for eight. It looks like, and then uh, obviously RC's not taking anything, so he's gonna she's gonna block one, taking seven, which does leave her around. So it's really interesting seeing all these characters live with uh, health that they definitely should not have been. <laughs> they should have been KO'd multiple times. So it's a really interesting game that we got going on here. It was also really unfortunate with Wes drawing that double orange off the top of his deck because that would have been enough to get the job done there. So, crazy stuff. Not playing anything and throwing Lionizer in. Going, obviously, back into the Wheeljack. They should be more than enough to get the job done on Wheeljack, especially showing those double oranges. Wes pointing out that he uh, would have loved to have had those oranges on his previous attack, which definitely would have been really nice and gotten rid of that RC. What this is going to allow now for Jason is two really big hits to be able to go into Wes's prime. Whew. That was a 10 damage swing with that Lionizer. So that was pretty crazy damage off that Lionizer. And again, like I said, this is going to give Jason the ability to swing two attacks into prime because prime does have to go into this Lionizer here. And the interesting thing is that he has to choose to really not KO this Lionizer. If he does KO this Lionizer, he's going to find himself in a really, really bad spot. Um... And it's just because he's going to be able to get access to the bold four, which is going to be real powerful and probably enough to get the job done if he's able to put that onto RC. So it looks like he's trying to armor up and he is going to be just trying to get the tough one and then sending him in, going for the focus here. In this situation, you really want blues on top of your deck here. This will be, again, you don't want to try to go for the KO and it looks like he left it around. And it's going to be enough to, I think, get it done. Yep. So it's nine getting in, but because he does have two armor, he's taking seven, which is exactly eight damage onto this Lionizer. And it's going to be really unfortunate for West here. Like I said, being able to now get both four off that RC is going to be really, really powerful. So it looks like he is going to be choosing to pick up the sparring gear here and get rid of that handheld blaster out of his hand. Good call. That tough two should be really nice if he does get to survive this turn here. He should be in a decent spot. We'll see what happens. Wes 
I'm sorry, Jason did top deck a supercharge. So this is going to be a lot of damage getting in here. And it's all unfortunately pierced. So this is going to be a pretty big hit. doing the math looks like it's going to be 10 damage getting in so it's going to be a straight pierce 10 with that rc huge amounts of damage now that going to leave uh the wheel jack to possibly clean up the rest of us let's see what he does and then he does have a weapon in the scrap so he does get in for three it's gonna be 10 damage west flipping pretty good here so we got 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 oh all right, I did go back and look at the footage, and they did flip correctly, and West did take exactly four, which was enough to KO the General Prime, because he only has 14 health, had 10 damage on him previously, took four to make it 14. So, we are into game three here. Players did make some more adjustments to their sideboard, and I do believe that um, West did have the option of going first because he did lose, and he did want Jason to go first. So, Jason is getting in here with Lion as they're most likely going into Wheeljack, kind of repeating the same plays from game one and game two. So he did block four there and uh, did take three damage onto the wheel jack. Wes is drawing for the turn. Again, picking up that improvised shield. I'm telling you, I have the same curse. It always seems like it. when you least need him, they always pop around. So it looks like he is going for the secret action, which is going to be the infiltrate. Um, it, the infiltrate is always an interesting card. You always really have to play it when your opponent is going to go kind of crazy with their cards or really try to push actions. His next character attacking on Jason's side is going to be top shot, so I don't know if I would have played the infiltrate there just because even if he happens to play like a press the advantage or a supercharge, it really doesn't produce a lot of damage. So I might have waited a turn on that, but he is going to be playing it just to really help protect his side and really try to maintain the damage, which I do think is correct. Getting in for four there on the Lionizer, and what it does also when you do play those secret actions, it makes your opponent decide if they do want to even bother playing the card. We did just see Jason top deck a supercharge there, so it'll be interesting to see if he does try to go for the play. It also would maybe depend on what the rest Jason has in his hand, if he's willing to really force that infiltrate out, or maybe it's the possibility he knows that there's Battlefield Report in Wes's deck, and being able to plan isn't really that relevant, so he still may try to push damage going for an erratic lightning now he did see infiltrates in game two from west during the flips he looks like he is going to go for it and he is going to get infiltrated going to be getting in here for i believe that's five damage and there's a white off the top so that is going to be eight damage getting in and we do still have blocking uh five so taking three damage onto the flame war Debating on any of those green pip cards. Letting everything go away. Drawn off the top. So Wes does have quite a bit of gas here. I don't know if he just picked up that infiltrator if he had two. And if he did have two, then I think playing the infiltrator on the previous turn is definitely okay then. Especially if he has the ability to be able to play another one here. He also does have a zap in hand if he wants to go that route. This is the turn that I would definitely consider putting down that infiltrate because you know the next big hit coming in is going to be RC or Wheeljack. It looks like he is going with that play. I think, do think that is correct? It really puts him off of an attack um, with an action card, which could be really nice and hopefully let his Wheeljack survive here. Looks like he is debating between the Reinforced Plating and the Noble's Blaster. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That is a uh, Gyro Blaster. He's debating on a Gyro Blaster or a Noble's Blaster. Gyro Blaster is obviously really nice. I main deck in a lot of stuff, and I know that the primetime list does main deck two of them, and it's just because there are these situations when your opponent has an, a billion bold, and it's really going to work out for him with this game. Now, putting it onto Wheeljack means that he also will not be getting the bold three himself from Wheeljack because whenever the character goes into combat, each character in combat can only flip two cards. So he's choosing to not flip Wheeljack either, really valuing that extra one armor, getting in there for, I believe that's going to be seven. Either way, it's going to be enough to get the job done on that top shot, especially minusing one armor from the Erratic Lightning. 
Wes kind of trying to play the longer game here, trying to just, I don't want to say hunker down a little bit, but kind of hunker down a little bit, take a little more of the defensive slow game and try to take this game to the long part of the game, which I do think is correct to try to really draw this out. Uh, Jason is going to be a more aggressive list so he will be trying to get as much damage in as fast as possible so the later the game goes the lower the chance he's going to have of kind of getting some of those things done by expending a lot of resources in the beginning of the game so looks like jason is deep thinking here probably deciding if he is thinking that is an infiltrate or a battlefield report the chances of Wes having both infiltrates there is actually a pretty low number so I can definitely understand why he'd be possibly thinking that it's a battlefield report but obviously this is a pretty big turn and you don't want to play into an infiltrate now flipping wheeljack uh, still means that if he does choose to go into the opponent's wheeljack that it's not going to do a whole lot playing grenade launcher and press the advantage is going to get met with the infiltrate he does really still have to kind of force his play there getting in for seven pierce and i do not know he's going into all right so looks like he took seven on to the wheel jack there hold on one second we're gonna take one second and check this out all right, so I had to go back and look at the footage and uh, wheel jack. I'm sorry, West did flip four with wheel jack there. He should have only flipped two because the gyro blaster only allows him to flip two. Now, it didn't make a huge difference other than the fact that he missed out on drawing some decent cards because RC is all pierce. You can flip as much blues as you want. She still gets in. But with gyro blaster, again, you're only allowed to flip two cards during battle with that character. So he did flip two extra cards. Be flipping Optimus Prime here. Looks like he is looking at the Noble's Blaster, and he is to give that plus two attack. He's going to try to probably one-shot this RC. I think it's probably his best chance, and he is going to be going into RC. He does have eight currently showing. He needs to get three more out. He has a really good chance here, and that's definitely going to be enough to get the job done onto that RC. That is going to be 12 damage. Yep, going to be more than enough to get rid of this RC here. He is going to be, Jason's going to be rid of, getting rid of the Peace or Tyranny for the Enforcement Batons. Getting rid of that Peace or Tyranny is actually pretty interesting there because this could be a turn that he could get pretty big, massive hits in. He could have Peace or Tyrannied his Lionizer, gotten a really big hit into Wheeljack, and then been able to untap and get another big hit into um prime he is going for the treasure hunt they're picking up four cards again including a force field which is pretty relevant in this situation because that does allow him to survive a hit Yeah, would have loved to have seen how the peace or tyranny turn would have played out had he have not chucked that would have been an interesting one <coughs> excuse me like i said he could have peace or tyranny got a big hit and on Wheeljack, untapped, possibly played another action, and then maybe even finished off Prime, which would have left uh, him in a very good spot. But playing the Force Field here is going to allow him to be able to survive no matter what. He's going to be going into Wheeljack and only flipping two. Let's hope that they do keep to the same thing here. So that is going to be enough to get the job done. They did see only flipping two in that instance. So that is the the one disadvantage to the Gyro Blaster is that if you put it on a character that has Bold or something like that, you can't also turn it off on yourself. Um, although he did obviously get to prevent a lot of damage coming over because Wheeljack on his opponent's side did not have Bold as well, but it was still enough to get the job done. Debating if he wants to pick up this Espionage or this Peace or Tyranny. This next sequencing is going to turn out to be pretty interesting as well. Looking at the way it's going to go down is that Wes is most likely going to throw out Flame War. And then uh, Jason will probably throw out Lionizer. Prime will have to go into Lionizer. And then Wheeljack is going to get to chew on whoever he wants if they do go that route. The other thing that Wes can do is try to go um, Flame War into Wheeljack. Try to get some early damage. Or he can even just go prime into Wheeljack and try to get a bunch of damage. And looking at his hand, he does have quite a bit of options. Going with an Energon Axe onto the Flame War. He's going to be attacking there. No flips again. I probably would have flipped prime there to give the extra bold and to give the tough. Yep, see, he miss, he did miss it there. It would have been an extra white off the top. In getting in for eight, though, that probably is going to be enough to break the force field. They're just doing the extra math. 
yeah, they're debating about some damage here, and it looks like he was forgetting about the force field, and then now he did get it. Getting rid of that, getting the four damage there, and Wes is going to be debating on the enforcement batons or the press. And it looks like he is going for the enforcement batons, probably just in response to the lionizer weapon. Alrighty, so it's going to be, ooh, man, this is going to be a close game looking at what is just left on the table. That's still a fully healed prime, which is a lot for Jason to have to deal with. So it'll be, uh, it'll be, it'll be an interesting one. We know that uh, the Lionizer is going to be getting in here, possibly KOing this Flame War, and then the prime is going to go back, get rid of the Lionizer, and the Wheeljack is going to have a free turn to get in for Big, big damage on this Prime. Jason Zek has the ability to put out so much damage out of absolutely nowhere. Just tons and tons of orange big weapons. So, you know, seeing it here, what he wants to do. He's probably debating if he wants to expend a bunch of resources and trying to get rid of this Flame War this turn or try to save him for his Wheeljack Swing. And I think trying to get this Flame War off the table this turn is going to be pretty relevant, and I think he's going to have to do it. So going with an Erratic Lightning as a weapon and a Reckless Charge, which I completely agree with, this looks like it might be just enough to get the job done. Jason also did flip a White there, allowed him to flip two more, which is going to be relevant as well. So Wes did get a decent flip, though. Again, unfortunate he didn't have Prime in the other mode on that because it would have allowed Flame War at least one more bold. Choosing not to get a cut in here. Line is going to be getting in for seven before flips even, which is nuts. So he's getting in for 14. Blocking five means that he's going to be taking nine. Yes, either way, it's going to be enough to get the job done. Um, that does get the flame war off the table. He is looking at a few cards. Wes is choosing not to. He's making sure he points out to add the three damage to Lionizer. Again, really going to help Jason out here because now it's going to make the Prime guarantee kill this Lionizer. And there's nothing that Wes is going to be able to do about it. He really needs to just figure out a way to kind of hun hunker down this turn. All right, now I do need to change cameras at this moment. So I'm going to let them shuffle up for a second and then I'm going to move camera. Alrighty, and we are back in full swing of the game. Like I said, I did have switch cameras because unfortunately later my battery was just about to die. So I did have swap cameras because I didn't bring a spare battery. Yada, yada, yada. But we are going to continue back into the game. We are back to when Jason um, did get his big swing in there with that Lionizer KOing the Flame War. And then now it is Wes's choice on what he does want to do from here. Now, obviously, we begin. he's going to I still function, bring back Wheeljack. This is going to be interesting because he's going to be throwing this Wheeljack in here, trying to KO this Lionizer, and then Prime is going to try to chew on to this, um, the Wheeljack. So it'll be pretty interesting. He is going to be uh, attacking for seven. Now, he did not have a weapon in the scrap, so he doesn't get bold three. It's also not necessary. This does put the Lionizer onto him. However, it doesn't really give him the extra turn because he um, Wheeljack was still untapped, right? So he didn't have a second attacker to be able to go into here. I don't think the Isol function was necessary. However, I don't think it would have mattered if he didn't play it either way. He's still going to be in the same situation with having Prime getting attacked by this Wheeljack. So he's going to focus. Let's see how much damage uh, he does get in here with this Wheeljack. He does need to get in at least 16 is what it looks like. Wes didn't flip any blues. Uh, they're doing the math. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That is exactly enough damage to get the job done on Prime. All he had to do was flip one blue, and unfortunately, West did not get to see one. That was exactly enough damage to get the job done. Big congratulations to Jason for getting the uh, invite. They are doing the last bit of math here, just kind of chatting about it. Chatting about also, if he just would have flipped one blue, it would have been a con uh, completely different thing. I know that we did look at the match afterwards, and that West did have enough damage to do the crackback and win. So it did come down to Jason attacking with that wheeljack, and he was able to get the job done. Now, I do hope that you guys did enjoy this gameplay. I, if you guys did, obviously, like would be greatly appreciated. Make sure you guys are subscribed so you guys can get access to all of our videos as soon as they become available. I have a really awesome new series that is going to be starting either tomorrow or on Thursday. I don't remember when I have it uh, ready to go for an upload but it's going to be really really awesome awesome handshake from those two fantastic competitors it's a great game i'll catch you guys in the next one